hello. Uh, I actually have an, uh, a, um, a little bit of an unorthodox video today. Um, I wouldn't normally do this, but um, because I actually, somebody posted in a um, Linux group I'm in, uh, that's uh, been linked down below in the last couple videos, but uh, you know, if you'd like to join and already, and already, uh, and already aren't in it, because I know I have some most of my subscribers are part of that group but um that's again linked down below or at least it's not linked because I'm not quite verified yet but it is um it is listed down below you just need to copy and paste it into your browser but in that group um uh, somebody shared a um shared a uh, shared a um a link to um and asked if people would uh work on testing uh the um 22.10 uh, kinetic kudu release for uh, the uh, newest Ubuntu, uh, the, the uh, newest uh, Ubuntu, um, they said they've entered a feature freeze. Well, here's a message. Um, hey, uh, hello, uh, hey everyone. Uh, Ubuntu has entered a feature freeze for our 22.10 Kinetic Kudu release. If you can, come help us test our images and start bug squashing. All you need is a system. Um, even if you don't have an AMD 64, you can test the other architectures with Ubuntu Core. And then virtual machines are fine too. So because they said virtual machines are fine too, and I like myself a virtual machine, I am going to be installing it on that. One second, there's just a link here. One second, ISO tracker, iso.qa.bridge.com. Okay, iso.q a.ubuntu.com Welcome to the ISO tracker. If for any reasons you cannot log in, all right. So I've never actually tested a um, pre-release, a um, done any bug squashing or anything. I haven't tested a, uh, a distribution like this before. So I just um, I'm just gonna move over here and then I'm going to do this over here uh, the QA track can be found here uh, let me just make that a little bit bigger uh, it's a master repository for all our testing within Ubuntu QA it holds our test cases records our results testing events there are several instances of QA tracker okay list of milestones or events for uh, milestone is named a testing event. Builds or respins. Previous version is archived, that including the result. Okay, archived in suit. What is a test case? Doesn't seem to want to expand. Oh, it's just saying, okay. Alright. <laughs> wow. Okay. Now they watch a video image testing. Alright. First link to Ubuntu SSO. You might already have one of these. Or by signing up. Okay. Alright, so we're just going to go through this whole thing. Uh, the whole walkthrough and all that. I just want to make sure, you know, I'm doing everything right by you guys too. So. Um, let's pop open, I guess, SSO, as they said we need an account. Now, I don't use Ubuntu, almost never, really, but, um, you know, for the sake of you guys, and just, you know, I've never done bug testing before, and, you know, the open source community has given, has, uh, given so much to me, and if, they, if all they want is for me to test this, I'll test it. It was my first distribution. Um, I ran it on a... 15. Oh, huh. I guess it would be 15 because that thing died when I was. When I first started using Linux, I, I used Ubuntu. Um, but that died within six months. Uh, not because of Ubuntu. It, it was. It was ancient at that point. It was. It was probably a. Seven or eight year old laptop, which for laptops is pretty, pretty remarkable. Do I have an Ubuntu One account? I do not have an Ubuntu One account. Please let us. Uh, okay. Whatever. Username. Let's. Try. 
Ah, uh, I'll do this. Um, and yes, for anyone wondering, I do. I really am a. Uh, I'm a spider person. I really enjoy. Um, I, I like spiders. As contrary to ninety nine percent of people. Um, ah. break <laughs> I read uh, that did not work capital letters are not allowed oh it's like a okay Having a time and a half. I think we got it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Unverified. Okay. Your account was created successfully. Please check your inbox to verify your email. Okay. I'm just gonna check my email real quick. Okay, I have the uh, I have my email pulled up here. Hello, uh, welcome to your new Ubuntu One account. You can log in right away and start using your new account. Please take a moment to confirm your email address with us. To confirm your email address, please click on the link below. Wait, bicycles. Wait, that's not a bicycle. So, yep. Okay, has been validated. Okay. Wow. All right. <laughs> Get started. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, I didn't know this was. Huh. Okay. Um, finish you. Okay. It's done. And then um. In that case, uh, I have come back. Reload. Hmm. You're already logged in. Okay, well, if I'm already logged in, then uh, if I go back, alright, find it. When reporting, remember to indicate the hardware used to test. If you use a virtual machine, note it. Okay, I sort of, I understand that. Oh my, okay. Milestones for focal bionic. Okay. Kinetic series. Okay, so they just want me to... Finding the right package, ensure it report a bug. See this page. I'm gonna put this up here just in case we need it. Um, and I guess this is just gonna serve as a learning curve for everybody. Uh, I just did it so I could test uh, 22.10, but if I find a bug, I am going to report it. Doing the installation itself. I'm booting the ISO image. Moving the system after installation. Okay, please. Okay, dealing. Oh, they have. Oh, they have all there. Okay. 
Alright. I prefer Lubuntu, but I guess because... Because... I'll just do vanilla Ubuntu for those. Okay, so bugs version. Oh, this is today's. Alright, AMD 64. Install. Test case. Oh, ha. Okay. Everything is clicking right now. So they want us to run these individual test cases under the for the kinetic daily, so that we can you know see this test case report an issue or something. Now I'm already signed in. Oh, log in to log your results. One second. Except all. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Result. Okay. Good. All right. So what I'm just going to do, I have this so uh, linked down. These are builds. Wow, that's a lot of. Okay. Well, I'm just going to do Ubuntu desktop. AMD 64. Download links. Okay. Wow, they have a whole setup for it. Okay, so this is just going to download. While we're here, um... Just gonna say this is the only time I think I've ever done something like this, so you know I'll I'll run all these test cases and all that. Uh, I'll run I'll run one of them just so we can also try it out at the same time. But I think it's some of my off time I'm gonna run them too. I mean, look, I'm not a huge fan of Mark Shuttleworth. I'm gonna be completely honest. He's just there's some things that I'm not a fan of. He's just not you know, he's not my favorite person in the world. Um, but I'll tell you what, you know, I'm doing this for the developers, make their job easier. If they need help, then, you know, I'll help them out. Considering, you know, I guess Canonical hires, hires people to develop Ubuntu, but still. I just did Ubuntu desktop, nothing special. But one second, I just want to take a look. I just want to show you guys how many different things are out here because they have the Ubuntu desktop. So I clicked on the Ubuntu desktop. These are all the different test cases. I'm going to be doing the um, install auto resize because it doesn't really matter to me. Um, and for the record, I have a um, I have a uh, like 500 gigabyte external uh, HDD uh, HDD uh, external hard drive over here that I'm not gonna install. I'm not gonna install Ubuntu in the whole thing. Trust me. But I am going to um, you g install it through a virtual machine onto Ubuntu desktop onto um, uh, onto a partition of this. You'll see what I mean once I boot up the installation. It is just downloading now. Pretty quick, if I'm being honest. Um, if you've noticed a change, I know I keep switching around, but I found this is a better place for A, when it's light outside, and B, when it's not light outside. Because I have a light over here, I have a light over here. 
I do have one white hue. It's not on right now, obviously. It'd be blinding you. But as opposed to all my other videos, these two um, lights, you can't see them in the background. And I, I was looking at um, my... I wasn't looking at Void at the first video too hard with this, but I remember at the second video I made, which was the, uh, my first newscast video, I was in my basement, and I had this light, and, you know, over my jacket, you can see the, the light on the, over the, on the side of over my jacket, and I just, it looked like, it felt like I was looking at the sun every time I, every time I, I was editing the video, <laughs> so... I mean, you know, at, at that point, you know, if, if it's uncomfortable for me, you're not going to have fun with it either. So what am I doing? So I figured, you know, a change in scenery would be nice. And um, and the lighting is obviously better. So I don't know in case you needed a whole rationale for that. Okay, now at this point, the installation, not the installation, the download of the um, ISO has been completed. So we're just going to move over to the virtual machine. We're just going to make one real quick. Forward. Browse. Downloads. What is it? It's kinetic. Kinetic. Choose. Um. <sighs> nope. No Ubuntu. No, they don't like Ubuntu for some reason. Um, look here. Yeah, Ubuntu 2020.04. Yeah, they don't have anything for generic. I'll just do this. Forward. Make sure we have enough. That looks okay. Forward. Enable. Nope. Forward. Customize. Um, then, um, Oh. Okay, BIOS UEFI. And then we're also going to add hardware and then USB host device. Next, go here, finish. And then begin installation. Uh, don't warn me again. Um, wait, no, do warn me. Apply. Okay. All right. Try to install Ubuntu. Now, once this loads up, I'm going to minimize it. I just put it on full screen out of habit. But once it loads up, I'm going to minimize and uh, not minimize it. I'm going to make it um smaller. <clears throat> Sorry, just to double check so we um, know what we're doing then to test this test case. Mm -hmm. Install. Okay, so we want to hit install. So let's minimize this. Boot up the image, yes. Click on the release notes hyperlink. Okay, release notes. Yep. Nice. Okay. All right. Click on the release notes to confirm the browser. You take into a release notes web page. Click on the install Ubuntu button. Yep. Um, let's just check. Let's um let's let's just check install Ubuntu key uh, proposed keyboard corresponds with your keyboard English US English US yes continue Oop, I'm just gonna make sure the test works pretty yep that works for me. Continue. Okay, now what does it want me to do? It says updates and software. Available options. I'm just going to zoom in a bit. Where did I do that? Okay. 
I just my, my laptop is at a distance right now I'm not sure if you can tell you might be able to it's further away than it normally is so I'm just you know I just need to make sure make sure it's a little bit bigger just so I can see it I'm thinking of trying I'm thinking of um, getting a monitor in here so I can see it and it's much bigger because right now it's sort of it's it's not great um Click on install Ubuntu. Select your keyboard layout. Updates in the software screen is displayed. Download updates while installing. On the screen, uh, note the availability of the following components. Network is available. Yes, it is. It's actually because it's a virtual machine. I've mentioned this before, but it is a um, Ethernet connection because of the bridging between my laptop and the uh, virtual machine. Uh, if uh, plugged into a power source, yes, it doesn't say that it's not. Um, install third option available. Yes, it is available. Yep, continue. This computer currently has no delete detected operating systems. What would you like to do? So what does it want me to do? Okay, select the Ubuntu alongside. One second. We're just gonna do manual partitioning. Partitioning. Boot up the image. Yes, 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 yes. A screen. Select something else. Something else. Continue. Okay. Free space. About five hundred gigs. about 600 I just like to make it more because um, if I'm going to install other um, systems onto this USB external hard drive which I like to do um, it's going to need that extra space so type for the new partition primary location beginning ext nope it's EFI so it's fat uh, 32 Matt um, boot E, uh, e F I. Okay. Okay. Okay, down here and then add I'm gonna give it I'll give it fifty. Um yeah, I'll give it fifty. Just two. Yep, thousand to yep. Ext mount point. Mm. Oh. I should do swap. Eight. Okay. Add one for sixty. Sixty. Ext four. All right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It looks like we're all set then. Install now. Go back to the menu and resume partitioning. Oh, 
Oh, did I not flag it? Yeah, fly system. Why? If it's fat 32, it's going to be... I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But if it's FAT32, that is an EFI system to me. I don't entirely understand that. Install now. Uh, let's just double check. This is what they mean. Select the drive you wish to partition. Use the add, plus, change, change, and delete, minus to create your desired scheme. Once you have acquired, uh, click the install now. Yep, continue. Where am I? I am in the Eastern Seaboard, so New York. Your name. Uh, Declan. Um, John. But just for the sake of this, we're just going to do computer's name. It's, um,. I just like putting my whole name. Right. Now, Ubuntu is a... <laughs> There's some things I don't like about Ubuntu. One, root is locked down, which I... On one hand, I entirely understand. Because it's going to be, you know, you, new users. But I, I personally want to have access to the root user in case something wrong happens. In case something... Um, bad happens with my own personal account, uh, with my own personal, with privileges, or I mess up something in my own um, configs or something. I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's just me because I'm more experienced. You know, I've been using Linux for five or six years. But um, you'll enter the domain and other details. Use Active Directory. What? Uh, use input your initial user. Yep. Password admin is dedicated. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's thunder. Hmm. Sorry, I got distracted. Um, input your initial user details and password. Admin cannot be used. Name. Uh, automatic login option is shown. Nope. I, okay. Com continue buttons become available. Yes. Press continue. Welcome to Ubuntu slide is displayed. Welcome to Ubuntu slide is displayed. Welcome to Ubuntu. Yeah, that's displayed. Um, yeah, so this one might be a little more choppy, just because I, um, I keep accidentally, I just need to move OBS all the way to the other, like, all the way over to 5, because I keep hitting 3, which is where I'm, I, I won't hit it, because you're just gonna get a whole line of, you know, if you look in a mirror and there's a mirror behind you, that effect, that's basically what happens if you are casting your screen and and you're there too. But um I I'm I keep hitting OBS, I keep hitting going into the um work um the um what is that called? It's a a tab the workspace that OBS is in. So I, I'm gonna need to cut that because I, I, I don't want to, um, I don't, not that I don't want you to see it, it's nothing to see really, it's just, it's so weird and a little, it just doesn't look all that good. So it might be a little bit choppier, just so you know. So 
installing almost finished copying files. Let me just double check something. Click the restart now button. Okay, almost done there. This is just on the edge. I don't know why it's um taking so long. I think that's the worst Newton cradle Newton's cradle I've ever seen. Just while that's installing because I have nothing else to do and this is basically all we have to do until it's finished. I bought this for like ten dollars. Uh, I wasn't expecting anything amazing, but I bought it for like ten dollars at I don't even remember where. I think it was like a craft store or something. I don't know. But look, it doesn't even last. One second. It doesn't even really last five seconds. And there's this weird timing. Now, it doesn't help that I can't, I can't hold it at an even level. Um, and our uh, this house is um, built on a slant, and unfortunately, it was built a hundred years ago, and almost I guess it is a hundred, almost it is, almost if not a hundred years old, and it um. It's not as level as it could be. The entire house is... I, it's, it's on a slant. It's built on a slant. But the foundation... I mean, even the... It's not even really level um, just on the ground floor, let alone up here. I mean, it's not, no, it's not slanted so that, you know, everything... Everything is sliding this way. But if you throw a ball, it's going to go this way. It's going to... Um, and just keep rolling. Unless it hits a carpet or something. You know, a no show. Um, I don't know if anything can really throw at it right now. Um, this, I, this is going to be the first time I've used Ubuntu in a long time. So I'm sort of interested to see, see it. Um, I don't remember, last time I used it, I was using, I said it was on an old machine, and it was an old version of Ubuntu, my father had installed it for me, that's how I got into Linux, because, you know, I, I, five or six years ago, not five or six, I just keep adding more on, four or five years ago, you know, I was a nitwit, <laughs> I mean, I'm 17 now, so four or five years ago, that would be uh, thir 12 or 13. I I wouldn't have the the I wouldn't have my I wouldn't have enough brain power to do this. Are you kidding me? Um, I never truly installed Linux by myself until about three years ago on this old Chromebook that I thought it, I had broken it it wasn't this one it was it was the one just before it um, I thought it had broken uh, under Chrome OS and as much as people say Chrome OS is light it still does take up resources whether you like it or not so it was um it's just like it's just awful computer I mean it served me well Please don't misunderstand me, but it's it's 15 gigs of space, so not memory, not memory, that's storage. So it was useless. I mean, not useless. I mean, it's not entirely useless, but I'm sorry. 
why in the name of all things that are good would you put that little space on a laptop like look i understand they they are getting better but and i understand they were meant to be cloud cloud machines you do everything online but the fact is is that these are the cheapest options so you know which not that we're in dire straits or anything but you don't want to spend a ton of money on a computer as if you do if you have the option not to so we would get these and you know i could i could do what i wanted on it um especially with this one this is 128 gigs of ssd as opposed to like the 15 gigs i had on the other one um so th this is the better machine and the other one uses celeron like sixth gen sixth generation uh celeron this is um i three or i five and it's tiger lake so the, the differences are insane one second I can pull up a terminal real quick. It's LS CPU. Uh, no, I'll just do NeoFetch. <laughs> Theme to Huawei. Um, huh, interesting. Interesting. Themes like on GP. Oh, i3. Um, that took me way too long. And it's four cores. I suppose just Celeron, which is like two, if that, and not great. They they are coming out with some Chromebooks that I'm going to look at. Um, again, I made this comment earlier on a um, post I made in a group. A Chromebook hardware is very it's it's unbelievably block it's it's unbelievably block stand it's proprietary it's all intel i mean it's really not great and it's hard to install anything but chrome os on it i had to go through a bunch of steps to get rid of chrome os and say what you will one second let me get back here say what you will about chrome os uh, but you can't call it Linux. I know it's based off of Gentoo, and and it's you know technically if you want to, and it has a kernel and it's based on the Linux kernel and all this jazz and all that. But if I cannot easily access the terminal and I cannot easily use port portage, or I cannot easily access the root user, or I cannot or I cannot run a sudo, or I cannot easily run a command. So much so, you have to give me that the only option for running Linux, how you and I would think about it, is a, um, is a, uh, box. It's a container. If, if that's what you call Linux, then Mac OS is Linux. And yes, it's not. I know it's not. But, and I know it's not even that. It's Unix based, but it's not Linux. It's more based. It's more of a BSD type thing. And you can actually, actually, I think you can get on a term. You can get on a terminal in Mac OS. You can easily, as far as I know. But Chrome OS, you can't. Chrome OS, you can get into a shell, but you cannot do anything. You cannot install an app with Portage, unless you install the developer. Uh, the developer's options. But guess what? That doesn't work half the time either. I tried using the developer mode on this, which I got in a developer mode, but there's this other thing that lets you use the terminal more like you would actually use it, like you would use a terminal, like I would use Terminator, you would use Alacrity, or Gnome Terminal, or Xterm, or whatever, or uh, Q Terminal, or something. You would go into the web browser and hit control alt t that would open up a web browser that is the uh like a, basically a tty in a web browser and i don't like working in web browsers uh, and this is finicky of me maybe and you know uh, but if i'm going to use a terminal i am not going to use the web browser one i'm going to go into the tty now there there is a tty that you can get into if you know what to, if you know how to go into it, which it's not easy either. But if you can go into it, you can access the TTY from there. But 
again, it's a process. I shouldn't need to go through a whole process to use my my Chromebook, my my uh, computer, the way I want to, and I shouldn't, and I should be allowed to freaking uninstall Google Apps. I understand it's run by Google. I understand all that, and I understand you know Google. Not everybody has the same thing, but I'd rather run Firefox any any day. But if you're forcing me to use Google, you're not only using space on my Chromebook, you're using space on my home computer for an application I don't use and or want. And or, no, an application I don't use and I don't want. And the, the, and it's a Google machine, so it runs Play Store because I guess they think we can get quality... That sounds wrong. You can get quality applications on the Play Store. I'm not saying I, I don't ever blame. I don't like to blame app developers for the <laughs> for the the crimes of the operating system. But there are okay. You cannot find. Um, there is no LibreOffice in Google Play. There's some Chrome extensions that for LibreOffice, but. All it does, it's basically just opening Google Docs and doing a and saving it as a dot um, ODF or uh, dot um, ODT or you know that uh, open document format thing. I don't know why that is what I have to resort to to use objectively better software, and also not have to run my entire life. Through a web browser. I mean, I use a web browser. I use I use Firefox. You saw me using it earlier. Um, when I know what the URL is, I like Bad Wolf even better. Which, for those that don't know, is a very, um, it's a very, 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 very bare bones um, internet uh, thing here. Well, this is installing. There's no harm in opening it up. Actually, there might be with that sort of stats. I'm just going to close this. I mean... Okay. Okay, I can close this. Uh, install bugs. Walk through. Okay. Alright. That's that. That's just going to be there. But let's open up Bad Wolf for a second. Uh, I just want to show you guys this briefly. Alright, so this is what it is. This is all it is. And you can choose between JavaScript or IMG. Now, uh, I'm not entirely sure what IMG is. Oh, toggle loading images, toggle JavaScript. Alright, it loads images automatically, but it does not load JavaScript, which I am fine with. I am okay never using that proprietary crap. But, see, this, there is no search engine. You can't just, you can't uh, search up, um... Biggest spider in recorded history. Nope, can't be shown. Because it needs to be a URL. Let's see, URL based one. That's why I love using it when I know the URL. No, I don't in most cases. Um, but, and look how little RAM it used. That used about one percentage of a RAM of RAM, which is super low. If you open up a Firefox, look, um, let's open up a tab. Look, that just went up. That was just loading. Let's open up Google. The RAM's going up. It's probably going to go up into the 80s in a second. But with Bad Wolf, it's only like, you know, it loads it. It does this. It doesn't load all the crap that I don't need to see. It loads the basic. It's beyond HTML. It would load something like this, but it wouldn't load all JavaScript and all that. But, again, I circle back. That was sort of an off-course off thing. But with a Chromebook, again, there's nothing... You can't uninstall anything that is that ships. Do you know it ships with eBay? 
it ships with the eBay application, and you cannot uninstall it. You cannot uninstall the Google Play Store, or else you have no repository. You have no way to run. You have no way to run applications on your computer. You cannot run. Um, oh, what is that called? Um, you, you can't uninstall any of their Office applications. I tried. It you know it removed all the folder the data folders but there, but it still showed up on the machine. So if I so if I clicked, if I opened it, it would it would it wouldn't reinstall it. It would just make me sign in again. So all it did was delete maybe a kilobyte of files with a kilobyte of uh, configs that say that I was signed into it. And look. I know this is a soapbox. Uh, I think I, I, I don't generally talk about this, but I shouldn't need to ask Google to uninstall an app that is run by the one of. I shouldn't need to ask Google to uninstall one of their apps on a computer. And yes, I understand it's Chrome OS. It makes it easier, and it's and if we want, and I, according to Linus Torvalds, if we want a year of the Linux desktop, we gotta start embracing Chrome OS. And I will embrace the Chrome OS users as my friends, but I will not embrace Chrome OS as an actual desktop Linux distribution. Because, uh, well, I said it before, it's bastardized Gentoo. There's nothing else to it. Uh, you know, you have, you have Gentoo, I believe it's Redcore, which is easy Gentoo, I, I believe. I mean, don't quote me on that, and it's not, it's still not easy. I, I would still not use it unless you know what you're doing. And then you have about here's here's Gentoo, here's Redcore, it's still almost directly based off of it, and it's still a great distribution. And then Chrome OS is all the way over here. I I, I don't know how else to explain this. I, I understand that's what I signed up for with my Chromebook, but when I got a Chromebook, but every time I try and give any time I try and give Google Chrome and Chrome OS a chance, it always it always rubs me the wrong way. And no matter your opinion on Google or anything, I just I think if you use Linux and you know you've been around the community, you understand the general consensus. You know we want control over our computers. I'm not sure if you heard, uh, not heard, but like in 1997, I think. Some random day. Um, it's called Windows Refund Day. It's when a bunch of Linux users. It's the saddest little thing. This is like a bunch of geeks that never got out of the house. Which, well, no. Who am I talking? You don't get this tan by leaving the house. But um, they. It was a bunch of Linux users. It was only a little bit, but there was a bunch of. Uh, but there was a group of Linux users went outside of Microsoft offices. It's called Windows Refund Day because at that point in time they were shipping Microsoft Windows on every computer you know because that was the that was the computer operating system of the time that was you know the one that people used but they would ship it and these people linux users wouldn't want to wouldn't want to use windows one second we start now when, when uh I'll, I'll one second i'll click the restart now yep Windows users wouldn't want to use, or uh, <laughs> Linux users wouldn't want to use Windows, but they had to pay for the license anyway. Anytime you buy a new computer, you're paying for a license. If there's one thing I'll give Chrome OS, you don't need to pay for a license, and I, I appreciate that. But you have to pay for the license, and it, you know, wasn't maybe maybe to you and me. Uh, please remove the installation media. Okay, one second. Maybe to you and me. Uh, maybe to you and me, you know, it's... It wouldn't seem like... Maybe, you know, you're okay with paying for it. Because, you know, to an extent, I'm okay with paying for Linux. Because... Let's be honest, you have OpenSUSE, 
uh, Enterprise Linux, you have uh, RHEL, you have OpenSUSE Enterprise Linux, and uh, you don't even need to use that. Or um, in the case of Zorin Pro, that's the same operating system, and and it sounds like I'm saying they're a scam, but it's not. It's more of a way just to support to support the developers. It's think of it as a donation. It's an expensive donation, but it's a donation. But it's nothing is the same as the 100 and change that you have to pay Windows. 120, I believe, is the most recent Windows price. One second. Uh, While well, this virtual machine is booting. Um, Windows, what are we on, 11? Price. What is this home license key? That's not right. This is right. It's one thirty nine. Because w when you buy a laptop, look here. Um, I was looking at laptops earlier. Um, uh, build your own laptop. Build your own uh PC. Here, PC. Uh, PC builder. One second. Uh, start build. I was looking at this because I, um, nope, I'm not looking, one second, I just need to see, uh, build Redux, one second, low pricing, okay, get started, we build for the best, best seller, okay, here it is, um, view build, <sighs> Intel Core, window, $120 for Windows, but, think the equivalent of that in 1990 something but that's aside the point so people would so the basically windows refund day people would go into their go went went to microsoft office the uh, microsoft hq and you know they protested for a little bit till they were talked to by microsoft uh i think it was a whole day and they and they, you know, they talked to him and all that, and they gave him the refunds. But they still kept. There was no such thing as a blank computer. There was no such thing as a computer that didn't come with Microsoft, I, with some level of. With some level of um. It was no. There was no computer that didn't in that didn't come with either Apple, which was sold exclusively by Apple. So there wasn't that many computers, or, or. Freaking, Windows was the one that you had to pay, and and went just by buying the computer. You know they work it into the price, but still that doesn't that doesn't counter the fact that you are paying for your operating system. And, you know, I said it earlier, I'll say it again, I'm willing to pay for a Linux operating system if it is worth it, and if I'm using it for something like Enterprise. Now, if it's just me and, I don't know, a server that I have, a home server, I'm just going to use Void Linux or some independent Linux distribution and put it on there and be done with it. But, you know, I'm going to make, I'm, I'm going to donate, I would donate, you know, unfortunately, you know, m money's a little tight because... Uh, I haven't held a job since I, I well I had a job for a while but I you know I donated to, I was donating to um the um Arch Linux uh, devs they did um not Arch Linux what was it I don't know I, I was no it wasn't Arch Linux it was um a GitHub I don't remember what program it was now. I was donating to the, I was donating um to the uh, developers. I just. And I'm fine with that. I just there's just a level where I shouldn't have to pay that much for an operator just to use my computer, especially if you're gonna do telemetry. Now one second, I believe install now. Now I believe there's just uh. 
My parents seem to think that's something we need in the house. I don't even trust it to turn my lights on. Anyway, um, what was I? Oh, yeah, I was just sort of ranting. I I shouldn't need to pay a bunch of money to use my to use to to have the pay. I shouldn't have to pay for my operating system, unless it's something you know something like enterprise or, you know, because the thing with open source is you either pay for it, which makes sense, or you don't have to pay for it. But it, it makes sense. This is why I'm doing this. I'm contributing back upstream in a, you know, not upstream, upstream like I'm, but I'm contributing to their project because I'm letting them know how their, how well their ISO works and how their, um, and how everything is working for them with this, um, with their operating system. They, you know, they wanted me to test their, test their ISO. I'm testing it for them. So I'll do what I can to help, even if, if it, even if it's not, monetary donations I'll do what I can to help but with Microsoft you give me no reason to want to pay for your product it is a it is an operating system and it works for some people and if you like it good for you I whatever but the fact it, the fact it doesn't work for me and I would still need to pay and you we I just showed it to you it comes by default you need to pay a hundred twenty dollars for uh, Microsoft Windows installation, and unless you go to Tuxedo Computers or something, which is more expensive, um, it's more expensive to get a blank computer or a computer that has Linux pre-installed on it because it is so niche. Um, but here, let's let's pull up Tuxedo, and uh, don't get me wrong, I completely. I'm just gonna leave that in because I don't want to interrupt this flow of this train of thought. But one second, I completely understand where they're coming from. I want to pay. I want to get a Linux computer. I I don't entirely want. Um. Now I, d I don't 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 quote me on this though because I don't entirely want, you know, a. What was I gonna say? I don't want a um. Windows, Linux, Windows, 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 Windows. I have no idea what I was going to say. And I was pulling this up just to show you. Oh, I was probably just repeating myself because I've been, that's what I've been doing. You know, I don't want to pay. And if I don't, but also if I don't, I don't want to pay for a computer, for an operating system that is. You know, I'm pay. I'm also paying for it with all the telemetry crap they collect, and yes, you can turn it off. But you know, at least with Ubuntu, you know, this is part of the reason I'm not a fan of Ubuntu. They have telemetry, but at least with Ubuntu, they um don't. They they give you the they give you it's right out there. I believe if I go over to settings, um, we start now. I believe it asks you. Uh, I believe it asks you whether you want a um whether you, whether you're okay with telemetry. You know, I I I answer no, and you know I I'm a little. I guess what I'm against is that I guess what I'm against in that case is that they ask me or that not that they ask me. I'm happy they ask me, but like that it's an option because I believe in everybody's privacy. But you know, at least they give you an option. And we do know Ubuntu canonical. What they collect is not. Okay, is it? Um. <laughs> okay, and then um. At least with um, Canonical, we know where they're, they they tell you where they, they don't sell your information, which you know it sounds hard to follow, and I would get that too. One second, Canon. 
but they don't sell it to the highest bidder. You know, if you're uh, Ubuntu, yeah, Ubuntu has had their issues. Please don't misunderstand me. I still don't like some of their business practices, but I'd rather use Ubuntu and you know turn off telemetry and maybe they give me an ad once in a while that and maybe they give me an ad once in a while that I can't even you know relate to. I'd rather they do that. Then Microsoft have me pay and then collect my data and sell it to who God knows who. And then, because I think as a community, as a world, I think we're starting to realize how much our data is actually worth. And I hope we are. But then selling it to God knows who. But the fact is, oh, the fact, what am I saying? I'm supporting Ubuntu because of the developers and the developers, I support the developers. And... I don't even know what the original conversation was. I'm just waiting for this to reboot. Um, yeah. I I really went off the deep end there. I'm sorry. I guess I was just talking about Chrome OS, you know. That's what I originally started on, and how irritating it is, is that as the quality goes up, the OS is not getting any better, I, I, I'd say. There's no activities. One second. I just like to do this. One second. Um, set, oh, he's GNOME. I thought they were back to you. At one point they were using Unity, and I really did like Unity, but it's evidently that's not um, not a thing anymore. One second, I believe. Telephony. Um, oh, that's odd. Um, privacy. Location services turned off. level okay hmm. maybe I was wrong <laughs> I know one of them has a uh, telemetry built in maybe I was wrong it's not um, going to um, send I don't know what happened this might just be a virtual machine thing I don't know I'm sorry for the rant seriously why do I need it You'd think you wouldn't need to put in your password to send a problem report. I don't know. That that's just that's unrelated. And yes, you can yell at me because I'm talking about not wanting to use Google and all that and I'm using YouTube, but that's mainly just because I use it, you know, you've seen my I use it to get information about Linux and, you know, at I use it for information, educational purposes. I mean, you know, I'm not making money off of it by any means. Um, I'm putting my time in. I enjoy doing what I do. I enjoy Linux. I enjoy being, I've only done it a couple videos, but so far I really enjoy being a Linux tuber. Um, you know, ostrich, ostrich, whatever. This is fine. I believe it's. I think it's listed on my um password. This is it, right? Oh, this is what I don't like. But I need. To, uh, it's their own. Yeah. I don't like snaps. 
I don't like Ubuntu telling me I need to use them. But, if this is the case, this is the case. I'm not going to sign in Google in front of everybody. Can we put in from, oh, here, okay, here we go. Here we go. This is telemetry. That helps. Uh, this includes things like computer model, what software is used, and approximate location you chose. Check the first report and legal notice. Okay, so see this this just this is the telemetry stuff I was talking about, which you know, the, looking at this is this is fine as far as I'm concerned. I don't mind this. Look, because in in terms of all the other telemetry crap that they could be sent that you know Google and all that could be collecting on me, this is what this is what I'm using. Um, this is OEM. That's that's the machine manufacturer. The vendor is QEMU. It, it all it knows is that I am using a virtual machine. I am a, this is a quote unquote standard PC uh, from 2009, evidently. Um, even if I was running it on here, I've taken so many screenshots of Neo fetches that everybody knows what I run on, anyways. So this is like, I I I really couldn't. As much as I like my privacy, this isn't a. This is a computer model. I mean, look. Let's just double check something. So look, so OEM computer QEMU product standard PC family, whatever BIOS uh, EFI development kit two OBMF. Arch HW cap GPU vendor uh, RAM disks partitions screens. Yep, this just shows what we chose. So this is like, you know, we chose auto, no auto login, uh, no live patch, session, um, and then session information. We use um, our uh, desktop environment as Ubuntu GNOME, which is uh, regular Ubuntu. Name is Ubuntu, type is Wayland. Oh, oh, good for them. Uh, I didn't know they were using Wayland. And then just shows languages, approximate time zone, um, install what media I got it from type GTK OEM false partition method manual it just shows what I did but it does not show you know what I'm looking at you know what I've installed recently look do you see anything it doesn't stay oh he he did the full installation or whatever it just shows I mean because this is a virtual machine I don't care about it I'm gonna send it um Privacy allows applications. Okay. Uh, no. Next. Okay. I don't need to install any of these. I can just install these by myself. What? Get Kraken. Oh, PyCharm. Um, by the way, if you're looking for a good IDE for uh, Python. PyCharm is wonderful. I love PyCharm. Uh, that's the only IDE I use. Everything else I edit with Vim. Um, I can't see anything. I, really, I don't really... Um, no. Everything looks good. Um, I don't want to open stall for it now. Um, done. Okay, close this. Alright, so because there was an error report, I'll just look at what it says. Maybe it's... I'm not going to take that out either. I hope you guys don't mind. Um, it's not even going to be choppy. I'm not even going to stop my... I'm just, I'm just going to keep them in. No. No, I won't. What am I, I don't know. I'll figure it out. Doing the graphical installation itself. Okay. Doing the actual install. So if you are. Select your time zone. Input your user details. Okay. Allow the machine to reboot now. Shutdown prompt is missing. Oh, that's minor. Um, past critical bugs. Well, bugs. 
No, I didn't see any bugs. I'm just gonna write something quickly installed. Fine on for. They must have just done this. Okay. Alright, so that's all I really have for this, you know. This isn't much of a video. It's mostly me ranting. <sighs> yeah. Um, I guess if you want to hear me rant over and over again, I'm here, but um outside of that, you know, um that's all there really is to this. I will be recording another video soon. I have a Lavuntu, I know, installation on this. Uh, I am planning on doing a retro gaming, um, retro gaming, uh, retro, retro gaming Let's Plays series. So it's basically just a bunch of Let's Plays of me playing retro games. But, um, I'm planning on starting that soon. Probably gonna record later today. Um, my first video, my first game I'm gonna do is Beneath a Steel Sky, which is a 19, one second, I just gonna minimize this, or just as a preview, I'm just gonna shut this down. Uh, dark mode. And, uh, I'll run through some other installation and things later. Okay, um... Okay, uh, it, Beneath the Steel Sky is a 1994, oh, I missed it, okay, it's a series, there's another version before that just came out like a couple years ago, but, um, Beneath the Steel Sky after being brutal soldiers uh, finding himself uh, shooting a fascist AI, yes. Um, Beneath the Steel Sky, it's from 1994. It is the first um, first game I'm looking at playing. It's a, um, it's a point and click, um, originally made by, um, it was the second game in the Revolution uh, Software um, game collection. I don't really have anything else. Um, I look out for that video soon. Uh, I'm not sure which one's going to drop first. Depends on how I edit it. So, that said, I am just going, this is uh, just me logging off. Um, it has been, it's been real. <laughs>